Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents The Land of the Living Dead, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder, come with me. Mrs. Santos had struck another blow against the Dr. English expedition. Captain Friday, Skip Turner, and Dr. English had struggled up the two miles of underground stairway to the sun in the hope of reaching the sacred city and saving the doctor's daughter, Judith, before she fell into the hands of Maya Nayib, high priest of the Brotherhood of the Living Dead. On their way up the stairs, they captured Tula, the green-eyed priestess known as Robert English's murderer. Captain Friday, without giving any reason to Skip or the doctor, let her escape. Yes, I did do that. But almost immediately after, however, she helped the three over of us overcome the Chicota Indian guards at the head of the stairway, giving us free access to the sacred city. As we were on the point of descending from the high cliff into the city, Mrs. Santos appeared on the scene. Armed with a revolver, she ordered us into a big stone chamber at the head of the stairway. Dr. English broke down and offered Mrs. Santos his precious map which led to the secret passage in the legendary room full of Chicota gold if she would return his daughter Judith safely from the sacred city. And then came an unexpected blow. Mrs. Sanders announced that she didn't want the map, that she now knew more than the map could possibly tell her. Dr. English, go into that chamber quickly. Just a minute, Mrs. Sanders. Not another word, Captain Friday, or I shoot. Do as I say. There. That is right. There. I have you where I want you now. Yeah, but what's the big idea of locking yourself in here with us? Mr. Santos, what's to prevent us from taking that gun from you? You will not do that, Captain Friday. You are going to listen to me. But Judith, Mrs. Santos, what of my daughter? Where is she? Has she fallen into the hands of Maya Naib? Senorita English will come later. Just now, there are more important matters. Nothing's more important than Than all the rest of us, Senor Turner. The girl is more important than the whole of the civilized world. Is that what you mean? I didn't say that, but she's my... Senores, it is time we had a showdown. I've been thinking that for a long time, Mrs. Santos. So far, I have received nothing but discourtesy, suspicion, and inconsideration from you. Are you still pretending to be a friend? If I am not still your friend, it is you who have cast me out. Believe me, Capitan, I have been working toward the end which I told you of back in San Francisco on the night that Dr. English's son was killed. You're working against Maya Nahib? I have been doing so with my heart and soul. Then why are you holding us prisoners in this stone chamber? After tonight, there'll be but two days left before Maya Nahib strikes to wipe out all civilization. Yeah, why don't you let us go down into the secret city and at least try to kill a monster that calls himself a high priest? Because such a move would be more than useless. You would all be captured or killed before you even approach the Temple of the Sun, where Maya Nahi presides. But even that would be better than dying in this raffle. And that is exactly what is going to happen to all of you unless you listen to me. Well, go ahead. In the first place, I want your confidence. I want you to trust in me. <laughs> you can't win confidence at the point of a pistol. No, I do not expect that. That's very good of you. Dr. English... Do you remember when we all stood together in that dark cell under the monastery and saw the werewolf and his men with Judith a captive in their midst? Yes, Mrs. Santos, I remember. Dr. English, do you remember what you said to me then? Uh, yes. Repeat it. I said that if you'd save Judith from those Chakota priests, I'd never doubt you again, that my faith in you would be complete. Good. And Captain Friday, what was it you said? I said the same, but you didn't say... Just a moment, Capitan. And did you not say the same, Senor Turner? Sure did. And do you still mean it? Yes. Yes, of course. What about you, Skip? Listen, you saved Judith and nothing else matters. And that goes for me too, Mrs. Santos. Very well. Dr. English, see that door over there? Yes. Here is the key to it. Unlock it. Judith! Judith! Oh, Claudius! Oh, 
Oh, my dear, it's really you. It's really you. Judith. Hey, look, it's really Judith. Mrs. Santos, did you save Judith from my Nahim? See, Captain Friday. Oh, and it looks like I owe you an apology. Why have you been so rabid against me? Why have you doubted me as you have? Well, it began back in La Jolla when you bent over that dying Chicota priest, Ixcon, after he'd stabbed himself. See? I heard him whisper to you, you must strike at once if you would save Tula. Well? After that, everything you did had a mysterious side to it. First, you disappeared with Judith. Then you saved us from the werewolf by some, some secret signal. You were in the sacrificial chamber when they had Dr. English stretched on the stone. We caught you coming out of a conference with a werewolf and a master of the sacred city. See, si, see, si, I understand that. On the other hand, Capitan Friday, did you stop to figure how many times I have saved your lives since we met? How many of my mysterious acts, as you call them, were performed to save you? Yeah, that's true, Mrs. Santos. I suppose my whole theory of suspicion was based on the words whispered to you by that Chicota priest. Strike it once if you would save Tula. Ah, see. Si. Yeah, I was pretty bitter over Robert English's death, and I had my doubts about anyone connected with Tula, the girl who killed him. Captain Friday, I am going to tell you something that no one in the world except Maya Nahib, the masters of the sacred city, and I know. No? Yeah? Something that will sound like an Arabian Nights tale. Something about Tula. About Tula? See, si, about Tula. It explains the meaning of the priest's words. Oh, Judith, but it's good to see you alive and safe and happy. But Judith, tell us what happened to you. Well, the werewolf made two huge Dakota Indians carry me down through a long passageway. This was right after I was captured in the monastery. And the passage seemed to lead around under the stairway to the sun. Yes, yes, we saw you go. It was when they entered that passageway we sent Mrs. Santos out to save you. Yes, I saw her. They captured her, too. Well, they put me in a chamber under the stairway right near the torture chamber and locked me up. Yeah, we tried to follow you. I was horribly frightened. I waited and waited. And then suddenly, the door was unlocked and a huge priest entered. He, he didn't look like the rest of the Chicota Indians I'd seen. He looked awfully intelligent, like, like a scholar. One of the maskers? That's what he called himself. He, he said he was going to take my mind away from me and give it to an Indian girl in the sacred city. Judith. Then it was true. But what do you mean? After you disappeared, we met a weird creature down at the foot of the stairway who told us that your soul was to be taken from you. Yes. Yes, it was true. He took me into sort of a vault and showed me some Spaniards whose souls had been taken from them. They were laying out in a row on stone beds. They, they looked as though they were just sleeping. Spaniards? Yes. He said that they had been like that for 400 years, that they were some of Cortez's men. Judith, where was this fault? I must see these men. The room is just beyond the torture chamber. Skip, I'd give anything in the world to be able to take those bodies back to civilization oh, with us. Father, how can you? It makes me ill to just think of it. And then what happened to you, Judith? Then the master led me back into the first chamber and made me sit down and look into his eyes. Look into his eyes? I tried to resist him. I fought his mind with every bit of me, but I, I couldn't. I felt myself slipping, slipping. I, I was losing consciousness. Then suddenly I, I grew horribly dizzy and everything went black. And that's the last you remember? The next thing I knew, I was being violently shaken. It was Mrs. Santos? Yes. When I opened my eyes, Mrs. Santos was bending over me, shaking me and calling my name. She gave me something to drink. And in a moment, I, I felt better. Then she took me from that awful room and brought me up the stairway to the sun to this chamber. Well, then, you don't know what became of the master? No. Well, we found his body behind a stone bench in the room. Mrs. Santos had stabbed him to death. <gasps> Mrs. Santos? That is not so. I did not kill the master, Senor Turner. Oh, Mrs. Santos, I, I didn't know you was listening. I thought you were still in the other room with Captain Friday. It does not matter. Then who did kill the master? We found the sacrificial knife, which I gave you back in San Francisco, buried in his back. See, si, I know, Dr. English. Do you remember telling me, Doctor, that this knife would be of assistance to us down here in the La Jolla jungle? Yes. Well, it was. The werewolf killed the master. The werewolf? See, si, 
the werewolf hated the master because he was superior to himself. He wanted revenge because the master scorned him, called him a dog, taunted him with being a beast in human form. And you took advantage of that? See, Capitan Friday. The master ordered the werewolf to take me to the torture chamber while he himself went to talk with Senorita English. As we went down the stairway, I told the werewolf of the sacred Chicota sacrificial knife which I possess. I told him how he might use it to even matters with the master. You're a courageous woman, Mrs. Santos. Then I showed him the knife and offered to give it to him if he would free me and help me to save Senorita English. It worked like magic. But I don't understand. If he wanted the knife, why didn't he simply take it from you? There is a Chicota belief that to steal a sacred knife is to court everlasting punishment. Even the werewolf dared not take it from me. But he could receive it as a gift. And so he turned Judas and knifed his own master in the back. And saved the life of the senorita. But what's become of the werewolf, Mrs. Santos? Is he in the sacred city? Do you suppose anyone who had slain a master would dare enter the sacred city? No. He is most likely even now fleeing for his life. You don't have much sympathy for him. And why should I? He wanted his revenge. I gave it to him. Dr. English, I despise a betrayer. Even though I did have to employ him. He probably deserved whatever fate held for him. Come, senores. Now that we once more understand each other, there is much to be done. Yes. Yes, doctor. Mrs. Santos has discovered the underground passage to the Chicota treasure room. To the treasure room? You found the passage shown on my map? See, si. And the passage in which the treasure is hidden does not connect with the old monastery at all. It leads from the sacred city to a subterranean riverbed to the other side of that huge peak which is called the Finger of God. And you found it? See, si, I have even explored it. Hey, did you find a Chakota's room full of gold? I had other things to do besides hunt treasure, Senor Turner. There is the civilization of the world to be saved. Oh, yeah. But how are we to reach the underground passage? First, we must pass through the sacred city itself. And just how do we do that? This room we are in is the uppermost in this series which drop down tier after tier through this cliff. In regular cliff-dweller fashion? See, si. By steps or ladders, we may descend from room to room until we reach the level of the valley in which the sacred city stands. Mrs. Santos, do you know what you're leading us into? Have you plans after we reach the sacred city? Doctor, I have plans that are so tremendous I dare not even whisper them here. Come, when we have passed through the sacred city and reach the safety of the underground passage, I will tell you. We'll have to be lucky to ever get through the sacred city. Before we take a step toward the sacred city, you are to put on these robes I have secured for you. Robes? See, si. They are the robes from the guards whom Tula helped you to overcome on the balcony. Then Tula did knowingly assist us. See, si, but enough of that. Now put on the robes. I have stained here to darken your faces. Ah, disguises, huh? You will need it. A white man could not hope to walk the streets of the sacred city. Here, senorita English, this is for you. And I will wear this one. Remember, you are not to utter a word. It would mean death. But if we are approached... Then let me do the talking. I speak the Chicota tongue. Good. There. Senorita English, you will pass. The stain is a little dark, but it will do. Now we are ready. And remember, we cannot reach the underground passage until we have safely passed through the sacred city. You must place yourselves in my hands... Yeah, man, let's up and at him. Led by Mrs. Santos, the Dr. English party is on its secret and dangerous passage down through the tiers of rooms leading to the sacred city of the living dead. Their faces are stained. They are wearing the garb of the Chicota Indians. To be found now means death such as these ancient people alone know how to meet out. Are we almost there? One more set of steps, and one more room to pass through, and we will be on the floor of the valley at the entrance to the city. Oh, uh, I guess I'm about all in. I wish we could have a light. Better to travel in darkness. Senorita English, it will soon be over now. <gasps> oh. Hey, Judith, what's the matter? Oh, something, something cold touched me. Cold? Yes, it... It was a hand. Are you sure? Yes. It, it's right in front of me. It's right in front of me. Captain on Friday, turn on your light. Yeah. Hey. <gasps> oh. A man hanging from the ceiling. It touched me. It touched me. Be quiet, senorita. 
Turn off that light, Capitan. Right. Oh. Come, we must get out of this room at once. But see here, Mrs. Sam. Be quiet. Follow close to me. There. Now we are safe. Turn on that light again, please. But, but who was it? Did none of you recognize him? Yes, yes, I saw. It was the werewolf. <gasps> Will? Are you sure? See, si, it was the werewolf. And the fellow's already paid for killing the master. See, si, he has paid, but not at the hands of Maya Nahib. Then who? Could you not see? Everything pointed to it. What the heck are you talking about, Miss Saddles? Senor Turner, the werewolf hanged himself. Hanged it? But why? Why should he? Why did Judas hang himself? Why does any traitor hang himself? Remorse, fear, self-hate. That is why. Oh, I feel sick. Get hold of yourself, senorita. Look, do you know what is on the other side of that door? What is it, Mrs. Sanders? The sacred city. We are about to enter the sacred city. Hey, here we go. The sacred city. Not another word. Remember, do not speak a word. Heed my one last warning, or we will never reach the underground passage. Keep your eyes open. See everything. Say nothing. We are going to cross the sacred city, and there will be much to see. You three men especially. Watch for the lake of molten lava. Lake of lava? Examine it with care, but do not pause. Watch depends on what you see. Watch the lake of boiling lava. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. You are the first white people but one to have passed safely through the sacred city. And this is the underground passage to the Chakota treasure chamber. It is the underground passage. It's beyond my wildest dream, Mrs. Santos. Marvelous. Those inscriptions. See, si, see, si, of course, Dr. English. It is a natural cavern cut through the rock by some ancient river and worn smooth by its waters. After the waters were stopped, the ancient Chicotas came here to carve the history of the world upon the walls. But how on earth did its whereabouts become lost to the Chicota masters? Only history could tell us that, Capitan Friday. Such things do happen sometimes. And the treasure of the Chicotas is hidden somewhere in here? See, si, somewhere in here. But tell me, did you all examine the lake of lava in the sacred city as we passed? I certainly did. What a nasty place. It must be 200 feet from the surface of the ground down to that boiling lava. How far is the crater across? A quarter of a mile. The whole valley in which the sacred city is situated was many centuries ago a seething mass of white hot liquid rock like that. What an amazing phenomenon. See, and my friends, it is even more amazing. The thing I propose to do. Well, please explain, Mr. Santos. Senores, Maya Nahib was speaking the truth when he said that he intended destroying the civilization of the world. He means it. And what is more, he has the power with which to do it. You know he has the power? See, si, Capitan, I know. And we have only two more days in which to stop him. Yeah, but you said you had a plan. See, si, a most terrible plan. A plan that will cost thousands of people their lives. That bad, huh? It means sacrificing thousands to save millions. To save the whole world from destruction. And horrible as it may seem... Certainly, it's justified. I would gladly sacrifice my life to prevent the crime which Maya Nahib is about to commit. Well, Mrs. Santos, what is your plan? When we entered the underground passage, did you notice that the entrance is on the hillside, pointing directly down on the lava lake? That's right. And the other entrance to the passage is high on the side of that highest of all peaks I once pointed out to you, known as the Finger of God. Yeah, I remember. You said it was so tall that it caused storms in its vicinity every day. See. Si. And it was from that conversation that I got my clue to the underground passage. When I spoke of these storms and lightning, if you remember, Senorita English looked startled, and Dr. English was highly annoyed. I suspected something. And so I went up on the slopes of the finger of God and stumbled on some ancient ruins. And in those ruins, I found the outer entrance to the underground passage. It was the same symbol which brought you to the secret passage in the monastery. Oh, that's good work, Mrs. Sanders. Remarkable. I never thought of it. And these ruins are on the edge of a tremendous lake. A lake on the side of the mountain? See, si. A lake at least a mile across, and it looks to be exceedingly deep. But I don't see what this has to do with Just the... Just a moment, Dr. English. 
what do you suppose would happen were that great lake suddenly to descend into that pit of boiling lava? In heaven's name, Mrs. Santos. Exactly. There would suddenly be a gaseous condition formed in the bowels of the earth that would blow the sacred city into eternity. The sacred city? Why, it had rocked the whole state of La Jolla. It would have an effect on the surface of both continents. It would wipe out my anahib, Dr. English. It would wipe us all out. That is my plan. I am willing to sacrifice my life. Are the rest of you willing? Yeah, but I don't get it. How are you going to get the water of the lake into the lava bed? It is too easy. Even now, there is but 30 feet of sandstone between the lake and the entrance to the underground passage. A little well-placed dynamite would send the whole lake rushing down through this underground passage and into the boiling lava. Holy Moses. Yeah, it's too big for me. I, I can't grasp it. I've got to think it over. But does it mean that we'll all be blown up? It may mean that, senorita. That is the chance we will have to take. But, Mrs. Santos, there is another way. Not demand too much on that, Captain Friday. It may be a way. But you told me that. I have little faith in anything where my Anahib is concerned, Captain Friday. Oh, I see. No. If you go into this, you must do so with your eyes open, knowing that it may be your last act upon Earth. If I only had myself to consider. That's exactly how I feel about it, Doctor. You. you. Oh, I know. You're both holding back because of me. No, no, Judith. I won't have it. Oh, look, Judith. I won't. We... If the rest of you are willing to take a chance, so am I. But, Judith, I honey... won't listen. I vote for Mrs. Santos' plan. Good for you, Judith. Dr. English, your daughter has chosen. Judith, are you sure? Father, that... I won't have you afraid for me. Very well. Mrs. Santos, Judith and I agree on your plan. And you, Senor Turner? Yeah, of course. Well, it's settled. Now then, when does the celebration come off? The whole city will be asleep by 10 o'clock. The best time will be tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. Then this is the night before Maya Nahib's big show. Hey, look here. I just thought of something. Well? Where are we going to get the dynamite? Senor Turner, the dynamite is at this moment hidden in the passage. I have seen to that. I have a friend in the sacred city. Mrs. Santos, you mean Captain that... Friday, of that we do not speak. Well, then there's nothing to do but wait. Nothing to do tonight and all day tomorrow but wait. Oh, if, if we could only do it now and get it over with. I, I feel like a condemned person. If you like, Senorita English, I can put your mind at ease, put you to sleep so that you will not even dream bad dreams. Oh, no, no. When you say that, all I can think of is that horrible master who tried to take my mind. There, there. I should not have mentioned it. Say, I've got an idea. Yeah, what? Let's look for the Jacota's treasure chamber while we're waiting. Oh, Captain, do you suppose we could? Father's told me about the fabulous jewels and treasure of the Chicotas. Of course we can. Come on. Come on, snap out of it, Skip. Come on, Doctor. A splendid idea, Capitan. It would take our minds off what is about to happen. Here, each of you take a flashlight. Everyone will set out to look for himself. The one who finds the room full of gold and jewels wins the prize. Oh, and what will the prize be, Captain? <laughs> well, we'll let Skip figure out the prize. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, why not give the finder his choice of the room full of jewels? It... Oh, I forgot. Jewels won't do us much good after tomorrow night. Skip. Ah, that was a dumb remark. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on, Judith. You and I'll go together. No, I, I, I guess I won't go after all. That last remark sort of took the pep out of me. Oh, please forget it, honey. Come on, give me the chance to deck you out in all the jewels in the world. <laughs> well, all right. I'll come. <laughs> Who's that? Is that you, Captain Friday? Oh, Mrs. Santos. How yeah, fortunate. The rest are scattered off someplace. I've been wanting to talk to you. I thought we had come to an understanding. But if you only knew how much I Captain admire... Friday, I ask you not to say any more. Oh, I suppose you're right. I told I... you how I felt about the matter. What more can I do? I know. Put the matter out of your mind. You're only making yourself miserable by thinking about it. You can hold out no hope, then? It seems strange, does it not, Capitan? That only a few hours ago you were condemning me bitterly as a faithless friend. Now you talk to me about affection? I ask you again. Can you give me no hope? No more than I have given you. If this terrible project comes off as we have planned, and if we escape... Oh, what is the use of talking anymore about it until this horrible strain is past? Mrs. Santos, you're a brave woman. I admire you with my whole heart. And if somehow we are saved, I... Yeah, 
No, there, I, I won't mention the matter again. Shall we join in the search for the treasure? If you like. He does not seem to matter hey, much to... Judith, down the road! Skip, don't act like a madman. Are you certain? Yeah, yeah, come on, I'll show you. I left her there. Come on, come on. Well, where's Dr. English? Hey. Doctor! Hi, Doctor! Yes, Captain, here I am. Come here, Doctor. Judas found the treasure. It wasn't hidden at all. Just a little door off the passageway. Oh, there you are, Doctor. Why, what's happened? Judith found the Chicota's room full of treasure. Where? Where? Come out of here, John. See, there's Judith's flashlight waving to us. Come on. Wait. There's something the matter. Look how that flashlight waves. Come on, Judith's in trouble. <laughs> For the moment, the plan for the destruction of the sacred city and Maya Nahib, its high priest, were forgotten in the excitement of finding the fabulous treasure. But with the cry of desperation from Judith, all the horror and fear of these last hours have returned to the party. Next week, at this same hour, you will hear the tenth and final episode of The Land of the Living Dead. You are listening to Adventures by Morse. <laughs>